The FAA has announced changes to the federal aviation regulations which will affect flight instructors beginning December 1st of 2024. We're going to break down all the changes in this brief video and then incorporate the updates into our full Flight Insight online flight instructor course, which you can check out at the link here or in the description. There are already some misconceptions surrounding these rule changes, so let's get this out of the way right now. The experience requirements for CFIs are not being scrapped or reduced. Flight instructors have an enormous responsibility, and the requirements to stay current and proficient are not being ignored by this rule change. Here's the full breakdown of the rule changes. You can go ahead and screenshot this for your own reference. It's based on the rule change document issued in the Federal Register linked in the description. Let's reference that rule change document to dive into the details of the changes. First and foremost, 6119 is being changed such that flight instructor certificates issued after December 1 of 2024 will no longer carry the expiration date we're used to seeing on the back of the plastic card. We're also used to getting a new card in the mail when we renew, which has the expiration date. This will no longer happen once we get our new cards without the expiration date. This saves the FAA the trouble and cost of issuing new plastic. Any certificates issued before December 1, 2024 will still carry an expiration date 24 calendar months out. For example, I just renewed my CFI ticket in September of 2024. So my new expiration date is September 2026, and it will remain so until I renew again and get new plastic without an expiration. So if your new instructor certificate doesn't have an expiration date, you no longer include your expiration date when endorsing student logbooks. Instead, you'll sign your recent experience end date. This seems to only be a change in terminology. I plan to sign my name, cert number, and experience end date with the prefix EXP for experience unless I see some more specific guidance on it. Again, just because the certificates don't expire, instructors will still have to keep up their experience so their privileges stay current. 61197 is updated to show that we need to complete the recent experience requirements and submit documentation to the FAA. This is unchanged. It's just that it's no longer being called a renewal, just a fulfillment of recent experience requirements. You can think of this sort of like the way our pilot certificate works. There's no expiration date on those either, but we need to stay current by doing a flight review every 24 calendar months. For instructors, there's an added compliance push by making us actually submit proof of doing the work, whereas the flight review is just in your logbooks. So what are our options for staying current? Really, those haven't changed much. We still have the four paths to staying current on our flight instructor ticket. Passing an instructor practical test, the so-called activity-based route, which requires at least five practical test candidates endorsed with a pass rate of at least 80%, serving as a company check airman or chief pilot in a part 121 or 135 operation, and completing a flight instructor refresher course. All of this still needs to have been accomplished in the last 24 calendar months. A new option for gaining the recent experience is to serve as an instructor in an FAA-sponsored pilot proficiency program such as WINGS. You yourself need to have done a phase of the program in the last 12 calendar months and you need to conduct at least 15 activities under the program in which you've evaluated and endorsed at least five different pilots. Next, it's not a new path, but flight instructors will now have a grace period to renew. If you're no more than three calendar months past your experience end date, you can still complete a FERC to stay current. You can instruct until you do so, and if you go past that point, you'll need to reinstate your certificate with a practical test, just as you would have before. Finally, a new rule 6140 is issued, allowing relief to certain military members posted overseas to be able to re-establish recent experience. There are also some new rules for who's eligible to train initial CFI applicants. Just being a CFI yourself doesn't automatically qualify you to train and endorse a new CFI candidate. There are new pathways to qualify for that now. First is activity-based. If you've signed off at least five practical test candidates with at least an 80% pass rate in the last 24 calendar months, you can provide the training. Or you can complete what's called a Flight Instructor Enhanced Qualification Program. The details of this program will be laid out in the changes to 61195. The other requirements for signing off new CFIs still apply like those found in 61183, but these new pathways open up opportunities for training. So that sums up the new rules. To bottom line it, not much has changed for instructors' day-to-day -day work. The reinstatement and paperwork requirements are the same. There are some new ways to stay current and qualify to train new CFIs, and the FAA should save a bit of money on not issuing new plastic cards. 
We'll incorporate these changes into the full Flight Instructor course, but wanted to get this video out to make sure everyone was aware of the changes now. As always, head over to the Flight Insight website to check out all our ground schools and more.